So I've got a 600 here you know, to demonstrate the four ways to accumulate power. Power accumulator number one, if for right-handed golfers, is when I bend the right elbow. That's how I accumulate power. So when I bend the right elbow, I've accumulated power. I've got power accumulation right here. And when I start down, I straighten out my right forearm. That's how I release that power accumulation. So power accumulator number one is bending the right elbow. And then when I release it, I just straighten out the right elbow with my tricep. I get no more power by bending the elbow that far. 90 degrees is sufficient enough. 90 degrees, release it. 90 degrees, release it. So this is power accumulator number one. And pressure point number one is this palm pad pressing down on the thumb. We'll talk more about the pressure points later. But power accumulator number one. And, and again, this is muscle power. The only way to release this accumulation is to straighten out my tricep. If I was to do a karate chop, the power comes from muscle force. Now the, the power cube number two, which is velocity power, it's a cocking and an uncocking of my left wrist for, for a right-handed golfer. So for a right-handed golfer, I'm going to cock it, that angle form between my forearm and shaft is the, is the power accumulation. And the release of the power is uncocking. So you cock it up and you uncock it. And so this is a hinge action. You're gonna hinge the club up and down, up and down, up and down. Now, when I hinge it up and when I, when I turn back, now I'm on an inclined plane, and so here I've accumulated two, I bent my right elbow, and so now I've done one and two. So I can cock it, uncock it, cock it, uncock it. Accumulate power, release the power. Cock it, bend my right elbow, now I've just employed power accumulator one and two, and I can just play golf just like that. just by using those two power accumulators. Now we have power accumulator number three, which is the angle formed between the shaft and my left forearm. So there's an angle here. And so if I go like this and I turn it back on my backswing and I roll it through, this is, this is power accumulation. Okay, this is transfer power. So if I was to go back, that's power. That's the release of that power. So on the back swing, this angle that's formed between my shaft and my lead forearm, this is power accumulator number three. So now if I cock it up and I turn it back, if I cock it up and turn it back, that's two source of power. And then when I bend my elbow, that's three source of power. So when I come on the downswing, I uncock, I straighten out my tricep, and then I roll through, but I'm not rolling through with my hand. It's the turning back and the rolling through of the angle that's formed between this shaft and this lead forearm this angle here. There's power, there's power when you do that. That's power. When a baseball player rolls his forearms, that's it. He's, turn, he's turned it back and then he rolls through, and rolls those forearms through. And so when you get the concept of this left forearm with the shaft, the forearm is turning back as Hogan called it, he pronated backwards and then he supinated through, but it's done with the forearm. So I can cock it and turn it, 
and bend my right elbow, which is one. So cock it is number two, turn it is number three, bend my right elbow is number one, and now I'm set and ready to go. I can just stop right here in my backswing and then release them all. So that's one, two, and three together. Now there's power accumulator number four, which is radius power of the circle, the radius of this club. And it's all developed by the angle formed between my left arm and my left shoulder. So this angle back here, that's accumulating power. And when I thrust with my body, my pivot, and I release that arm off my chest, that releases the power. So power accumulator number four is really, <coughs> excuse me, the master accumulator. So I cock it number two, I turn number three, that's the angle form between this forearm and the shaft. I bend my right elbow and then I can take this angle and go even a little bit higher if I want to really focus on power pivot number four. For me, I don't, I don't constantly use a lot of four because I like to just cock it, turn it, and bend my elbow and go, on, go to my, my hand shoulder height because I have more controlled swing and I can still develop enough power at my age and my weight. I'm, I'm 49 years young, weighing about 55. It can still bump it out because I understand where the power comes from and how and when to release it. So, cock it up, turn it, bend my right elbow, and then power cue number four is the angle form between this left arm and left shoulder. So, those are the four power cue angles. So, how do you practice them? Just like we've done everything else. We're going to train it first until you get to feel what it looks like. So simply, the first thing that I like to do is sit here and just cock my left wrist up and bend my right elbow. And if you're familiar with the distance wedge training, cock it, bend my right elbow, that's my nine o'clock swing. Cock it, bend my right elbow, my nine o'clock swing. Now the way I train one, um, one, two, and three is I cock it, turn it, and bend my right elbow. And so when I'm playing golf, I'm gonna cock and turn, cock turn, and bend my right elbow, cock turn and bend my right elbow. And so I've done this so many thousands of times to where I just cock it, I turn it, bend my right elbow. So that's me using power accumulator one, two, and three consciously. Now, obviously four is being used, but I'm not consciously training. Now there are times where I'll do two and four, where I just focus on cocking it and taking my left arm straight up on this angle. So now I have a full swing. This is typically my driver's swing where I'm just gonna cock it and go up here. I'm gonna look in the mirror, I'm gonna cock it, I'm gonna go up here. I'm gonna sense what that feels like. So this is power cue minute number four, the left arm, left shoulder angle. This is power cue power minute number two, the cocking and the uncocking of the left wrist, the cocking is the accumulation of power, that's two and four. So you can just take your trail arm and just put it on a club just to, have more control, but you cock it and use four and train that. Cock it and four. And then you can sit there and cock it, train four, and then just release. Just release. Just release. And let that happen naturally instead of trying to do something with it. So cock it, four, Weight shift, release. 
Now from the side view here, face on view, cock it, turn it, bend my elbow, all the way up to four. That's a full driver's thing right here. I don't work on that much. I focus on cocking it, turning it, and bending my elbow, and getting to nine o'clock, because I know from experience that once I do that, momentum's gonna carry me typically to a full swing. So cock it, turn it, bend my elbow to nine o'clock, finish my transition. So Hogan and all the great players, they typically started their weight shift before they finished their backswing. So as you can see, my weight shift my big foot right at nine o'clock, and then I continue with the backswing. This is why I love training those distance wedges and going to the nine o'clock swing, because I know, I know everybody, the momentum's gonna carry them further than nine o'clock. So I tried to do a nine o'clock swing, it went to about 10 o'clock. So power kilometer number one, bend the right elbow. Now all I focused on was bend the right elbow. Two happened automatically. So now one and two are in place. I didn't do any, I didn't do any three. Three is a conscious movement of this shaft and this forearm turning backwards. So I can cock it and bend my elbow. That's one and two only. So I can sit here and practice one. Now, as I said earlier in the introduction, the right elbow is typically gonna, gonna pass the ball before the release. So if, if you can just see the ball right here, let me move this camera down a bit. So there's the ball. When I get up to here, the elbow is ahead of the ball before release. I have this triangle, my magic device, everything's in line, my weight's forward. That's a perfect impact position right there. But to get to that position, the elbow is tucked in the body and it's in front of the release. So you can practice just one, two, one, two, one, two. Power cue number one, release. Power cue number one, release. Power cue number one, release. Can in pocket, power cue number two, release. Power cue number two, release. Slow back, release. Slow back, release. Two, 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 boom. That thumb is pressing down, cock, uncock, just like I was hammering. I'm hammering it down. But the cool part is I'm on an inclined plane, hammering down on a circle, on an inclined plane. So instead of me hammering straight down, Vertically, I'm, angled, I'm releasing on an angle on the inclined plane with a full horizontal release, meaning the toe is straight up. So horizontal release, toe straight up. There's an angle release where the club is angled, and there's a vertical release that you use in like a flop shot. That's all controlled by the left wrist. I'm sorry, the left hand. I 
I can practice power command number three. Just turn it back, go through, 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 turn, 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 roll, turn, roll. You turn it back and roll through. You cough, turn, bend the right elbow. And then pressure point, uh, power from number four. Angle up here. Angle up here. There's pressure. So let's take and, and talk about the pressure points that are associated with all four power commanders. So there's pressure here against my chest. That's pressure point number four. So there's pressure back there. And as I start my downswing, there's more pressure exerted this way, and I can take that extra pressure and thrust it, thrust my shoulder, and thrust that arm off my chest, and continue turning, and release power counter number four. So there's pressure here, the angle between this arm and the shoulder is the power accumulation. As I, as I start my downswing, there's more pressure going backwards, and I take that accumulated power and pressure and fling it off my chest. That's power cue number four and pressure point number four. Power cue number two, the, the, the even numbers are on your lead side. So for right hand golfers, two and four are on the left side, the left hand golfers, two and four on the right hand. So power cue number two. Remember we talked about earlier about how to get a grip. You put on the grip, there's pressure in these three fingers in the palm pad. So pressure point number two is in these three fingers. There's pressure on that club. There's pressure in your grip. So I have pressure point number two and power cue number two. Pressure point in the grip. Pressure point number one is taking this palm and pressing on top of my thumb straight down the shaft on top of the thumb. And when I, when I accumulate power finger number one by bending the right elbow, and I want to release that power, there's pressure on top of my thumb, and that pressure is then thrusted outward to straighten out my tricep. Power accumulator, and the pressure point is number one on top of the left thumb. Now since we turn the roll with this angle formed between this shaft and this forearm, this is, the, this is power accumulator number three. The pressure point number three is the side. If I take my lead finger, the side of this right here, between the top knuckle here, right there, the pressure right in between here, that's pressure point number three. When I take my grip, that pressure is exerted on the, on the side of the shaft on the side of the shaft, that pressure is pressed inside the shaft towards the target down the line. So when I take and I do power accumulator number three and I turn it back on the incline plane when I'm swinging through, I'm rolling down the line, down the line pressure point number three, as well as rotating, rolling over these forearms to release that power accumulation. Because remember, this is, this is the accumulator, this is the release of it. And the release is happening with these forearms. So imagine the right forearm, imagine the right forearm when I, I can turn this back, I'm gonna turn my forearm back. So the, the angle between the shaft and this left forearm can still be, 
accumulated power in the back by turning this forearm backwards. So I turn and roll, turn and roll. And when I roll, when I turn and I roll, when I turn and I roll, I'm rolling down the line. As you notice, these forearms are like this. They're not all like this, which causes a severe hook. You know, I'm not, I'm not manipulating the club face. I'm turning and I'm rolling. Turning and I'm rolling. But I still have flat left wrist, bent trail wrist, getting to impact. Still have my power package, this triangle. This triangle. Back, through, back, through. Forearms are right like here. There's no manipulation to try and manipulate the club face and impact by doing this stuff. The hands, it's just rotating of the forearms. That would be power commander number three. So putting it all together, you have power commander one, which is muscle power. You heal it, and then you release it by thrusting the tricep. That's muscle. You have power commander two, which is velocity power. You cock it and uncock it on an inclined plane, plane of motion around a circle. Power commander number two, that's velocity power. Then we have power commander number three, which is transfer power. We're going to transfer this turn and roll into power. So there's power here. That's power. And then we have radius power, which is the angle between the left arm and the left shoulder. Kind of like a master power accumulator. And really, there's no power in this left arm per se. It's inert. But the power comes from this pressure being applied here, and then an angle here, and then the transfer of the pivot of the body, thrusting that arm off your chest. That's the radius power, the big radius. So those are the four power accumulators and the four pressure points. Get yourself a smash bag. Practice and bring your questions to the call, uh, bring your questions to the live coaching. Train your brain to learn each individual accumulator by itself or with them. You can do one, two, three, you can do two and three. I can just simply cock it and bend the right elbow, which is one and two. You can sit there and play great ball just by cocking your number two power accumulator and bending your right elbow, number one power accumulator. Cock and bend puts me in a nine o'clock swing. And if I actually swing, so cock and here, that, that, this is the block practice to train it. Cock and bend my elbow. That's one and two. Now to practice it in a swing, I would cock it and bend it and swing. Cock, bend, and swing, and as you see, it went past nine o'clock. So I'm gonna just employ two and one. I'm gonna have to cock it, turn it, and bend it, one, two, and three. Cock, turn, then one, two, and three. I'm going to focus on just one and four. I'm going to make sure I get my angle up here. I'm going to bend my right elbow. One and four. I'm 
focus on two and four, two, four. Do it with or without a ball. Two, four. Cock it, four. Cock it, uncock it. Cock it, uncock it. Four power accumulators. One, bend, right elbow, release it to release the power. Two, cock, uncock, cock, uncock. Three, turn, turn, and you roll to release it. Four, four. <laughs>